de acento e de pensiero. Oh, I'm making an epic radio, mate. Yeah. Forget it. Let me and Mama should talk in the same motto, good, no? No. Here you go, but it's still 105. 105, sir. Train smash again, boss. Oh, no. Haven't you got any steak left? You had it last night, ex. Hey, Borgia. Not yeah. train smash again. Ah, uh, what do you want, huh? Spaghetti? Michael Mama's a boy big and strong, so he's not a frighten the girls no more, huh? Three, two, five. Surface contact. About 12 miles. Thanks, Borgia. Sir, I might have one mistake left. Don't waste it on executive officers. It's too big to me. What do you reckon? Heading for the shipping channel. Yeah, virtually. Yeah, well, we can discount that. We're looking for a 50-foot cruiser rigged for marlin fishing. Starboard engine's OK now, boss. Spewed up oil every bloody way. Thanks, Jack. Oh, Kelly. I want a word with you. Come on, smart. Now, I don't like your attitude, Kelly. If you've got a problem, you come to me with it, all right? Have you got a problem? Me, Sam? No, Sam. Good. And smart enough. You're a stirrer, Kelly. You're making work for me, the ex and the senior sailors. Work that we can do without. And if you don't back up, we can do without you. I don't know what you mean, sir. I think you do know what I mean, Kelly. Nobody could cause as much trouble as you do and not be aware of it. I'm sorry, sir. Could you be a bit more specific? I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I don't know what you mean. All right, Kelly, if you don't know what I mean, you report to me in my cabin at 1400 and I shall tell you. Skipper. Well, right, sir. We've got a contact here close to the island. Going 355, range about two miles. Looks about the size we're looking for. Could be. Let's have a look here. 50-foot cabin cruiser rigged for marlin fishing, white hull, timber coach house, white flying bridge. What do you reckon? Let's give it a try. Starboard 20, course 355. Flash up the second engine charge. Right, sir. OK, Tiffy, I'll take over now. Right. OK, Bruno, 355. Looks like a 50-footer, white hull, rigged for marlin, I'd say. Phil Mason's boat. I can't make out the name yet. Noe, make with flag. Stop, I'm going to board you. Wouldn't it be beautiful if Mason was on board himself? Yeah, if we can get to him. Water's shallow in there and he's got a draft of a couple of feet. Yeah, I'll get him. Second engine in line, ready to go. Bring her up to 20 knots, X. All right. Look, you might turn nasty too, so I want the whole bit. Boarding party and gun crew. Yep. Boarding party, close up. Gun crew, close up. Up in starboard. Up ahead, starboard. Come to uh, 1050 revolutions. 1050 revs. Keep down! 
16 feet. It's getting pretty shallow, boss. Yes, thanks, Wayne. 16 feet and shoaling. 14 feet. 14 feet. Don't worry, the wheel's on the bottom. 13 feet. feet and shoaling. You're not going to try and go through there, are you? I'm going to get that bloody parasite. I don't care where I have to go to get him. 11 feet and shoaling. Hold that course. Aye, aye, sir. It's only a depth of seven feet between those islands. Thank you, X. 10 feet. We draw Ten. seven feet. Well, what do you want me to do? Let him go. He's a drug smuggler. No, but they'll hang you if you hit. Let's worry about that if I hit. 10 feet and shoaling. Stop, I'm going to board you. Charge, what's wrong with this? Why does this always happen? Hurry up with that megaphone, will you? Nine feet. No batteries. Nine. And we've got none. Stores haven't had any for two months. No megaphone, I'm sorry. Eight feet. He said he wouldn't follow us this far. It's all right, we'll lose him up river. Party up the ready. X. Yes. I'll lead this one myself this time. Sorry? I'll take command of the boarding party myself. Come on. All right. Anything you say. No reflection on you. I'm smart enough. Boarding party ready, sir. Good, thanks, bro. You're mad, you bastard! You nearly killed me! Where the hell do you think you are? Stop your engines. I'm going to board you. You can't order me around. You could have killed us. Boarding party at the ready. Lines ready? Sounds a bit stroppy, sir. Here. You know, to tell you the truth, Ken, I almost hope he does make trouble. Boarding party. Turning forward. Dismiss. That shot nearly hit us. Are you crazy? Your name, please. Who do you think you are? On a request from customs, I've been instructed to apprehend this vessel and search it. Are you Philip Mason? Yeah, all right, I'm Phil Mason. Now, you show me your search warrant. I don't need a warrant, Mr. Mason. Go on, get off this boat. Both of you and your men take the upper decks. Kelly, you come with me. I'm going to search below. You can come with me if you wish. You bet your life I will. I've got some valuable gear down there. I know about you Navy blokes. I 
ever seen a skipper so determined to get a chap. He had been packing it for a while. We damn near scraped bottom. Oh, well, a miss is as good as a mile, I suppose. What's the clue, sir? Hmm? I mean, why is the boss so fired up? He's making it pretty personal. Oh, I don't know. Well, it's just that this mess has been making a fortune out of drugs and everybody knows it. So far, customs haven't been able to catch him at it. Nothing up here either. Could be any one of a dozen places. Take days to search this place properly, and we haven't got days, have we? What happened? Bill, did he hit you? Shut up. Give us your hands. Well? Sorry, sir. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing below either that I could find. Looks like we dipped out, eh? He was carrying something. Nobody runs like that unless he was carrying something. He's dumped it. Well? Go on, get off this boat. Look, you found nothing, so you can apologize and just get the hell out of here. Well, go on, get! I'm seizing this vessel and taking it to Cairns for a proper dockside search. What? You heard me. I'm taking this boat to Cairns so customs can search it properly. You can't do that. Yeah, well, you keep saying that, but that's exactly what I am going to do. There are no drugs on this boat. If you pull a stunt like that, you'll never hear the end of it. It's piracy. I'm leaving the boarding party to man this vessel. Buffer. I'll sue you. I've got friends in Canberra. I'll do you properly. Give you some trouble, sir. Hey? We had the binoculars on him. We noticed he was a bit bloody when he came up from below. Yeah, yeah, he walked into a door. Hey, you got a minute there? Yeah, right. Hey, what happened really? The boss bell on him one, didn't he? I wouldn't have a clue, mate. Fair dinkum. Miles on deck. Happened down below. See, I was looking for blood when he boarded him. Looks like he found it. Well, <laughs> what really happened? In. Thought you might like a brace. Ah, oh, you your blood's worth bottling. Excellent. He really did walk into a door. Huh. I'll be sticking our necks out a bit, seizing him. You mean I'd I? All right, then, aren't you? I mean, we don't really have the authority, do we? Oh, I think so. Oh, well. I suppose they'll forgive anything if they find heroin on board. Yeah. This Mason character was giving the boss a bit of a lift. So he belted him one. Backhanded him. Knocked him right across the cabin. How about that? Oh, well, he, of course he knew I was there to back him up. <laughs> oh, bull! What? I said bull. Bloke ran into a door. I just heard the boss say so. I don't know. I was there. Yeah, right. And the boss is hardly gonna gonna hit anybody with you around as a witness. Is you're he? calling me a liar, boy. Oh, Oh, I'm just saying, mate, that you always make it. Yeah, come on. What are you doing? Kelly, don't start. Kelly, one more time. Cut it out, Kelly! Okay, we'll see who's lying. Yeah, yeah, we'll see what. What are you, gutless? No, I'm not. Just try it, right? Get over there, go on. What? Don't you. Kelly. Sir? This is exactly the sort of thing I was talking to you about this morning. He was asking for it. What is the matter with you, man? Are you deaf? Swain! Sup? Sort this lot out. Righto, you two. Forward mess. Get your caps. Investigate it, Swain. Sup? If there are grounds, form a charge. Sup? He's a bloody troublemaker, Charlie. If he's charged and if he's guilty, I want him off this ship. Preferably after Cairns. I'll hear the case before we dock. Yes, righto. I... I really could have done without all of this. There's no the last of this, Bert. Well, got to get two weeks supplies before. Yeah. Don't you? Good day, David. Right. 
Now you caught him, eh? Yeah. Ah, good. What'd you find? Uh, nothing. Nothing? But... No, well, didn't they tell you that we brought him in here so you could do a dockside search? Yeah, but I, I thought if you seized him, you must have found something. No, that's your job. Well, let's just hope we do find something, eh? Yeah, I hope so, too. Oh, listen, Roy, you might find that Mason's just a little bit irritable. Yeah, well, I bet. I see Kelly's found himself a friend. Yeah. And don't they make a nice couple? Welcome back. Thank you, sir. Would you like to come up for coffee? Ah, uh, no, not for me, thanks, sir. Our chef just uh, of course feeds us the stuff to see. <laughs> How's he shaping up? Good cook? Yes, yes, he's the best. Excuse me, sir. Well, you had a bit of excitement, eh? Ah, uh, yes. You mean seizing Mason's cruiser? Yes. Yeah, well, there's no doubt in my mind that this Mason's into drugs. I mean, that's how he gets his money. Yes, you're probably right. Question of whether he was carrying drugs at the time you seized him. What, you think that I may have overstepped my authority? Well, the signal did read stop, search, and signal your intentions. Yeah, well, that's exactly what I did do. I stopped him with considerable difficulty, I might add. He gave us a hell of a chase. I searched him, and then I signaled to you that we intended seizing him. Well, I quite expected you to override my decision. You'd have looked pretty foolish letting him go again. Oh, you assumed I'd back you up, and you're quite right. And now let's hope that we're both right and those customs bods actually find something. Otherwise, the Navy's going to be left with a considerable amount of egg on its face. The Admiral won't be at all pleased. Neither will a lot of others in Canberra. Pulling it to bits. They've taken the panelling out of the cabin. I mean, all of it. Every last scary. Yeah. Haven't found a damn thing, I bet. No, but that doesn't mean they'll stop trying. They're prepared to work all night if necessary. You know, he was carrying something. That, that's why he ran. <laughs> when Borgia called out eight feet of water, I thought we were a goner. Yeah. Anyway, even if they don't find anything, I reckon it'll be worth it. At least he will have dumped the shipment. That means he will have taken cross bearings. Be back there and pick up the stuff if they let him go. Yeah. Bastard. David, look, if I'm out of line, just tell me. I'll pull my head in. But aren't you taking this a bit personally? I used to know somebody who was hooked on that stuff, Charlie. Ah. You ever seen what it does to them? Well, there aren't too many heroin addicts over 25, Charlie. They tend to die. Come in. Oh, Lieutenant Keating. Close the door and sit down. Sir. We spoke yesterday about the seizure of the cruiser. And I said then that you were right to assume that I would back you up. Well, I'm afraid we've uh, had a bit of bad news there, sir. Customs have reported that they haven't been able to find a thing. So I was wrong. Nevertheless, your action was right in principle. And of course, I continue to back you up. In principle. I don't understand, sir. In principle, as distinct from what? I've received a formal complaint from the owner of the cruiser, a Mr. Philip Mason. I see. Was it necessary at any stage to use physical force? Of course not. And how did Mr. Mason get the broken nose? There's a doctor's report to the effect that it is broken. Is it? Well, uh, actually, sir, he, uh, he walked into a door. This is a serious situation. Mr. Mason claims that you assaulted him. That is not true. He says that there was no provocation, that you could find nothing incriminating on board his boat. 
and that you lost your temper during the course of questioning and you struck him. Lying. He further claims that he ignored your signals to stop because he was afraid. He says you drove your patrol boat at him at top speed, at times in excess of 20 knots, in waters that were chartered three, four metres deep. You're not actually going to take any of this seriously, are you, sir? I have to. This is going to be a matter for fleet. What it amounts to is that I'm being slandered by the unsubstantiated report of a, a civilian drug smuggler. Mr. Mason's claims are not unsubstantiated. He says that um, Abel Seaman Kelly was a witness. Well, he was. He was there when we searched the ship. You can ask him. He'll tell you that I didn't even lay a finger on Mason. I have a signed report here from Kelly in which he corroborates every important detail of Mr. Mason's claim. What? He says that you lost your temper during questioning and that you struck Mason. You asked him to keep quiet about it and he refused. Why? He also says that you maliciously charged and wrongly convicted him in a summary trial aboard ambush yesterday. Every damn seaman that's ever been convicted will tell you that the officer in charge was wrong. Yeah, yes, but Kelly claims that your actions against him were malicious and deliberate. An attempt on your part to discredit him as a possible witness at your own court-martial. Bring in the accused. Hup. Quick! March! The accused has been furnished not less than 24 hours before trial with a copy of form LP116, the charge sheet, circumstantial letter and annex, list of officers constituting the court, list of witnesses for the prosecution and the summaries of their evidence, and a list of the exhibits which the prosecutor proposes to put in evidence. The accused has been informed that any witnesses whom he may desire to call and whose attendance can reasonably be procured shall be summoned on his behalf. <coughs> Lieutenant David John Keating, you are charged with conduct to the prejudice of good order and naval discipline in that on the 15th of May 1979, you did assault Philip Peter Mason, thereby occasioning him actual bodily harm. I say you to this charge, guilty or not guilty? Not guilty, sir. You are charged with on the 15th of May 1979, you did, by negligence, allow Her Majesty's Australian ship ambush to be hazarded. I say you to discharge, guilty or not guilty? Not guilty, sir. We were below decks. There was nobody else there except another seaman. And this officer was armed, so there was nothing I could do. Anyway, the officer pulled the cabin apart, nearly wrecked my chart table, pulled everything off my bunk. He didn't find anything, so he started yelling at me and abusing me. Then he grabbed me by the shirt with his left hand and hit me as hard as he could with the back of his right hand. I've since had my face x-rayed and I have a broken nose. You say the officer didn't find anything. I presume you mean drugs? I wasn't carrying any drugs. I believe the boat was subsequently searched by the customs people. They pulled it apart. Did they find anything? No, miss, there was nothing to find. I tried to tell Lieutenant Keating this, but, uh, well, he wouldn't listen. I have no further questions. You say the customs people didn't find any drugs because there was nothing to find. That's right. Why then did you ignore the signals being flown by the ambush? Why did you run? I object to that. I'll uh, rephrase the question. When you first sighted the ambush, what was your immediate response? I altered course away and increased my speed. In effect, you ran. No, in effect, I took evasive action. If I hadn't, he'd have ran me. Oh, come now, Mr. Mason. Do you want us to believe that you expected to be rammed by an Australian naval patrol boat? Well, what would you think if some clown came bearing down on you in excess of 20 knots in 10 feet of water? There were signals being flown at the yardarm of the ambush requiring you to stop. You did not stop. Why? Well, I didn't know what the signals meant. There was no time to go looking up the code book. He was far too close to me. 
There were signals being made to you by signaling lamp to stop. You also ignored that. Why? He blinked his light at me, yeah, but I can't read Morse code. Anyway, I told you, I was far too busy getting out of his way to take much notice. In fact, a warning shot had to be fired before you finally stopped your boat. Mr. Mason, why run if you had nothing to hide? Well, I suppose I panicked a bit. Anybody would have. I've got a lot of money tied up in that boat. If he'd have hit me, well, I would have been put out of business. I've got a wife and kids. He was driving that ship like a madman. Did Mr. Mason provoke Lieutenant Keating in any way? Uh, yes, ma'am, in a way. He was a bit abusive. Uh, but that was what the skipper was hoping for. How could you possibly know what Lieutenant Keating was hoping for? Because that's what he said, ma'am, just before we boarded the cruiser. What? He was speaking to the buffer, ma'am, and he said, to tell you the truth, Ken, I hope he does try to make trouble. So in your opinion, Lieutenant Keating was hazarding his ship. I'm sure my friend will question you on your qualifications in making that assessment. So on what do you base your opinion that Lieutenant Keating was hazarding his ship? It wasn't only my opinion, ma'am, that he was hazarding the ship. Oh, really? Whose opinion was it? The executive officers. Lieutenant Fisher? Yes, ma'am. After he warned the skipper about the water getting shallow, he said, they'll hang you if you hit. They'll hang you if you hit. Yes, ma'am, that's what he said. I put it to you, Abel Seaman Kelly, that you've concocted this story out of resentment for your commanding officer, because he tried, convicted, and fined you for being a troublemaker on board the ambush. No, sir. No, sir. But it is true, isn't it, Lieutenant Keating fined you $150? Yes, sir. But that was after I reported the incident on board the cruiser. The skipper wanted me to cover it up, but I couldn't, so he fined me. He wanted the revenge. Now, you claim you reported this alleged incident aboard the cruiser before Lieutenant Keating fined you. Well, to whom did you report it? Well, as a matter of fact, that's what started the fight that the skipper convicted me for. I was only trying to do my duty and report the incident. I was talking it over with some of the blokes in the aftermiss. He's the one who wanted revenge, not me. Let me take you back, Abel Seaman, to the 23rd of January, 1976, when you were in the HMAS Melbourne. I object. What happened over two years ago can have no possible bearing on the matter before the court. The matter of the character of this witness does have a bearing on the credibility of his testimony. And I wish the court to hear evidence of the character of Abel Seaman Kelly. Disallowed. Carry on. On that day, you were convicted of the theft of a watch and $52 in cash. The property of a Lieutenant Commander, John Michael Burns, were you not? Yes. Speak up. Yes. You were given a suspended sentence of detention and a fine of $200. Is that correct? Yes. Now, the interesting thing is, Kelly, that at the time, you were a leading hand. Now, you're only an able seaman. Why is that, Kelly? I object to this line of questioning. The witness is being maligned. This is muckraking and serves no useful purpose. I am examining the character of this witness so the court may better judge the veracity of his testimony. Well, the court feels that the character of this witness is relevant. Carry on. Why were you demoted, Kelly? Well, you know everything. You tell us. Right. On the 20th of November, 1976, you were convicted of behaving with contempt towards a superior officer, the Lieutenant John J. Adams of HMS Vampire, in that you called him a pig in front of other people. For that, you were reduced in rank. Is that correct? Yes. And on the 7th of July, 1977, you were fined $200 for willfully disobeying the lawful command of a superior officer, the Sub-Lieutenant Robert Allen Smith of HMAS Stewart. When he ordered you to repaint a carelessly painted section of ship's rail. You don't like officers, do you, Kelly? I object. All right. 
Let us look at these three convictions. On each occasion, the offence was committed against an officer. Is that correct? Yes. No further questions. So, you went below, Lieutenant Fisher, to change into your action working dress. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. But you returned to the bridge for, shall we say, the climax of this hair-raising pursuit. Objection. I withdraw hair-raising. We've heard Mr. Mason give evidence that he couldn't understand the flags you're flying, nor can he read Morse code, therefore could not understand your light signals. If you were so anxious to stop him, why didn't you contact him by megaphone? Surely that was a reasonable means of communicating your request? Mr. Mason has told us that you were close enough to him to do it. We tried, ma'am, but the megaphone was found faulty. Really, Lieutenant Fisher? Yes, ma'am. We'd run out of batteries and couldn't obtain any from stores. No. Could you please tell the court at what speed Ambush was travelling during the chase? 20 knots, ma'am. There was someone reporting the deaths, is that so? An able seaman was on the echo sounder. What were those deaths? They varied, ma'am. They varied. Well, you can give us the shallowest step that was called out. Eight feet. Eight feet. <laughs> it's not the depth of water, that's the depth below the keel. The stern of a patrol boat drops four to six feet at high speed. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. Then ambush was driven at high speed in very little water. The charts are quite accurate and the tide was full. You see, I think you have to be familiar with the patrol boat operation to realise it's not quite as dangerous as it sounds. For one thing, the bottom's sandy there. There are no obstructions indicated. Uh, and, uh, oh, thank you for that little lecture, Lieutenant Fisher, <coughs> even though I didn't ask for it. I think what you're trying to say is that Lieutenant Keating was not hazarding his ship. Yes, ma'am. Exactly that. Exactly that. Then, Lieutenant Fisher, would you please tell us exactly what you meant by they'll hang you if you hit? Do you deny mm. you said that? I may have said it. Did you say it? Yes, ma'am. Then you will please tell the court what you meant by it. Well, it's, um, it's just the same we have. I mean, we often joke about hitting something. Oh, you were joking. Your patrol boat was driven at high speed with very little water under the keel, and you were joking. No, ma'am. I put it to you, Lieutenant Fisher, that what you meant by they'll hang you if you hit is, if anything happens at this speed in these waters, you'll be court-martialed and found guilty. Is that not what you meant? I suppose something like that. You are, in fact, predicting exactly this outcome. And, in fact, you are expressing your opinion of your own commanding officer's guilt. They'll hang you if you hit. This concludes the case for the prosecution. You got spaghetti for brains, eh? Look, look at that, eh? Do you think you could make sandwiches without burning? Hey, what's all the noise about? Swain, Bruno burnt the lunch. Swain, I'm posting out of here now. Shut up, able seaman Bonello. Just because there's no officers on board doesn't mean you carry on like schoolgirls. Yeah, well, that's another thing. Six months it's taken me to break in this CO, right? No coffee before six in the morning or after six at night. He treats me okay and he gets steak. Now, if he cops a posting out of this, who are we going to get? Some snotty-nosed sub who, who still wets his pants and thinks he's Lord Nelson. Finished, Borgia? Yeah? Well, try and behave like you're grown up, will you? And keep the noise down. You too, Bruno. And hurry up with lunch. I'm hungry. You're always hungry. 300, stupido. Ah, uh, shut up. What's all the noise about? That's been going on all morning, mate. Well, why didn't you do something about it? Don't get heavy. If met a cook yet that was normal. Hear that bloody Sheila from the fleet legal office give the XO hell this morning. 
Not he's crazy about. Not anymore, he isn't. <laughs> Still reckon the CO sock, Mason? Probably. What are we going to do about Kelly? Kelly's a liar and a troublemaker. I think we should give Kelly some special attention. What do you reckon? They're sending a bus up the river, are they? Don't know. Word is it isn't too good. Lieutenant Keating. Isn't it a little unusual for a naval officer to board a civilian vessel and seize it? Surely this is more a matter for the police or the customs. Uh, it is a little unusual, sir, yes. But I had received a signal from my area commander asking me to check the movements of this particular vessel. And what reason did you have for boarding and seizing the vessel and for believing that Philip Mason was carrying drugs? Well, it is actually pretty much common knowledge in the Cairns area, sir. I object to that. Oh, with respect, sir. Now, I submit that this is germane to the defence case. Mr. Mason is not on trial here, sir. Lieutenant Keating is. I'll allow the objection. I'll rephrase the question. What prompted you to actually give chase and seize Mr. Mason's cruiser? The fact that the cruiser took off as soon as he sighted me and refused to obey any signal to stop made me believe that he was carrying something, that's something illegal. And under the circumstances, I thought it well within my duty to do what I did. Now, you've heard Abel Seaman Kelly give evidence to the effect that he believes you tried and convicted him because he decided to report this uh, alleged incident on board the cruiser. Yes, sir. Now, was this the first time that you had to discipline Kelly? Uh, no, sir, there had been several other occasions. Mm. And now we've heard evidence that uh, it would appear Kelly has had an unfortunate history in the Navy. Would you describe him as being a troublemaker? I object. My friend is leading his witness. No, I'll allow the objection. I'll rephrase the question. How would you describe Kelly's performance? I object. Oh, now what? I'm not leading him now, sir. Abel Seaman Kelly is not on trial here, sir. Lieutenant Keating is. No, I'll allow the objection. Lieutenant Keating, when the ambush is involved in a boarding action, who leads the boarding party? Usually it is Lieutenant Fisher. In fact, wouldn't you say he always leads them? No, I would not say always. No, of course not, because you led this one. Despite the fact we have heard evidence from the executive officer that he went below, dressed and armed himself to lead the party, and with this single exception has led every other party from the ambush, has he not? He has. But not this one. No, not this one. Why not this one? Because I felt like leading it myself. No special reason. There is a reason for everything, Lieutenant Keating. A motive for everything, including assault, which is what we are trying to determine at the moment. Who is Janet Knowles? You know her. I don't believe that she has anything to do with this case, ma'am. I believe she has. Uh, sir. And if the court will bear with me, I will attempt to establish the connection. Now answer the question. Who is Janet Knowles? She was my cousin. In fact, you grew up together, same suburb, same street. Yes. You were very close, in fact. Yes. You say she is your cousin. Is she dead? Yes. You know she is. How did she die, Lieutenant? With respect, ma'am, that is none of your I business. Object, sir, to this whole line of question. What possible relevance can it have with this case? If the court will bear with me, sir, for one more question, I will demonstrate the relevance. I'm going to permit this one question. And if it isn't relevant, I'm going to strike out the whole chain of questions. We are trying to establish a motive, Lieutenant Keating, for the alleged assault of Mr. Philip Mason, who you believe to be a drug smuggler. How did your cousin die, Lieutenant? From an overdose of heroin. Thank you. Lieutenant David John Keating, on the charge of assault, the court has found you guilty. On the charge of hazarding your ship, the court has found you not guilty. Do you wish to make a statement in mitigation? No, sir. Lieutenant David John Keating, the court having taken into account your previous good record, the court has sentenced you to six months loss of seniority. This board is now dismissed. This
Just as a matter of interest, ma'am. I didn't hit Mason. Now I just wish that I had. Pipe, Bruno. Make it bloody good. Pipe! Thanks, mate. Turning forward. Yes, push! Welcome back. Thanks, X. They meant that. Now let's get the hell out of here. 